Absolutely. So I'll kind of start a little bit about with um, what I do here at ACU. So my title here is Director of Pitching Development. So I assist our head coach, uh, Rick McCarty, who's also the head coach slash pitching coach with some of the day-to-day -day stuff here, um, along with uh, sorting through a lot of our track man data and other technology that we're using here at ACU. Um, so that kind of is, is how we got started a little bit with using uh, Baseball Cloud, right? So at the beginning of this fall, we kind of got to the point where we were using Google Sheets, and I will pull up my uh, some of our slides here. So, all right, you guys able to see my screen? Got it. Yep. Perfect. All right. So, all right. So we're kind of at this point here. You got this big old CSV, right? What the heck are we going to do with this thing? So we got a bunch of numbers, and like. What are we going to do? How are we going to make this consumable for our athletes? How are we going to be able to look at it so that we're able to make informed decisions based off some of these numbers we're getting from TrackMan and all that stuff? So looking at this CSV itself, pretty daunting, right? So that just kind of allowed us to move into phase two, where we just took the CSV, drop it in Google Sheets, and start churning out some of our own stuff there. So we're sorting based on metrics that we're looking for, um, cutting out some of the fluff, organizing it by pitcher, by pitch type, all that stuff that's going to allow us to one, give stuff to our athletes and two, be able for us to kind of analyze what we have in terms of what we're working with on our staff and how we're going to be able to deploy that this fall and this spring. So as you see, it's good, but sending this to some of our athletes is going to be, there's going to be a little bit of learning curve there in terms of we got to teach a lot of these metrics. We have to explain how these metrics work with one another by pitch type, all that stuff, right? So we wanna be able to make a clear plan of action with this stuff for our guys too. And on my side, I wanna try and automate this as much as possible because you can see down at the bottom, going from what you have on the left to what I got on the right, it takes me about two hours on average if say we're playing a five inning scrimmage and we got that many guys. So we do that three times a week, that's gonna add up. So that's how we ended up getting to the point where we are with baseball cloud, right? So, like I said, we have a five inning scrimmage. We do that three times a week this fall. That's five to six hours for me of cutting and sorting this track man data. And you can see on the right, I do that for with baseball cloud it takes me about 20 minutes. Got way more visuals, got a lot of good stuff that we can use in terms of sending this stuff out to our guys. Um, stuff that I can relay to coach McCarty on that side, on that side, it just allows us to streamline this process a lot more. So, I got four to five extra hours a week and you can see a nice little visual here of what I send a coach of me talking to coach McCarty, sending him all the stuff from baseball club. So how am I going to be able to maximize my time with some of the stuff that we have now? So I think we go look at it in around two different routes, right? We have the stuff we can use for our pitcher specifically. How can we use baseball cloud to identify some of the low hanging fruit with our staff? Um, are we going to strengthen some of the weaknesses? Are we going to double down on things that we're really good at? And two, how are we going to be able to use it to attack hitters, right? Are we going to be able to uh, find any weaknesses that we're going to be able to exploit? How are we going to be able to create individual plans of attack uh, that are going to be able to favor uh, the matchup in our guys for our guys? So I got four to five hours, right? I'm going to do both. So we'll start with some of the stuff with our pitchers specifically, right? So here's a specific case with one of our guys on the team, right? So looking through baseball cloud, looking at some of the stuff, you can see um, the biggest thing in terms of when we're looking at the break plot and the break metrics from baseball cloud for this athlete is the slider in terms of what we're looking for. We're seeing a lot of induced vertical break. So that's just telling us that slider isn't getting quite as much depth as we would want it to. And there's a little bit of horizontal break. So, but we want to be able to try it and turn that into more of a true slider and less of a bad cutter. Um, and for, for perspective, this is a left-handed pitcher, really tall guy, like six, nine release height. So looking at this stuff, we're going to go to the next step of, all right, how is it performing right now? Just with the metrics that we have. So we start by looking at the contour graph with baseball cut in terms of swing and misses. We see, wow, we're getting a majority of the swing and misses in the lower part of the zone with this athlete. So I'm just like, let's take this a step further. Use one of the tools allows us to isolate uh, all of those pitches lower in the zone. You can see that's kind of the image we have on the right-hand side. Um, and when we do that, you can see 
along the bottom, we have some of the metrics from that zone. The biggest thing you're looking at there is we have a 91% whiff rate on this pitch that a lot of people, including myself, would say these are pretty below average metrics on a slider, right? But the way it is right now, you could argue this could potentially be one of the best performing sliders in Division One baseball with a 75% whiff rate above average, and it's getting swings at the relatively the same clip, right? So we, this allows us to shift the focus from, all right, let's not worry so much about trying to change the shape because it already works really, really well the way it is. Let's change that focus to let's throw this pitch as hard as you can to that zone. So we don't really need to work on killing that vertical break as much as we thought we did because the slider is performing so well. Um, and that's partially going to be due to just the nature of this athlete having a six, nine release height and getting an insane vertical approach angle on this pitch to, to begin with. So that was just one example of where we can take some of the movement metrics and use baseball cloud and look at the outcome metrics and then say, okay, we don't need to do what we thought we did. We're going to leave it as is and change the focus for this pitch type. So that just allows us to expedite the process. And now we can work on a different pitch type for this particular athlete. We're going to work on a change up instead of trying to change the slider. And I think that's going to be bode really well for him come spring. So the second case on the pitching side where baseball cloud was really valuable is just in terms of athlete education, right? With all of the visuals that we're getting from baseball cloud, it makes it very easy for us to show our guys what actually is going on and how their arsenals are playing. You can see at the bottom here, we have the visuals versus the spreadsheets, right? That CSV that we saw at the beginning is telling you exactly the same thing as that visual is on the right. But if I show the athlete the spreadsheet versus showing him that contour graph, I'm going to bet you 10 times out of 10, that contour graph is going to make way more sense to that athlete than going through and trying to explain what's on the CSV. So that's just going to cut that feedback loop down significantly. And one other thing I want to highlight here is our secret weapon this fall was the filters, like being able to filter by pitch type, filter by lefty righty splits by counts. It just really allowed us to dive in deep this fall and this winter when our guys were away and really figure out, all right, where do our guys have the advantages with certain pitch types, counts, movements, and where can we find those that lowest hanging fruit come spring and really maximize these next five to six weeks that our guys are on campus getting ready for opening day. And you can see there's a nice little picture of the staff breaking down some of the visuals from baseball club this fall before the fall world series. So those are some of the stuff we focused on the pitching side, but now how are we going to get these dudes standing 60 feet away out? And with the job that our hitting guy, Craig Perry does here, it's not a, uh, not an easy task. So, we're going to move on to forming our plan of attack, right? With baseball cloud, like I said, I mentioned in terms of how we can look at the strengths of our staff, we can also flip that and look at some of ways we can exploit some of the hitters that me and coach Mumper had to face on the purple team, this fall world series. So using some of that stuff to, like I said, find ways that we can put ourselves in the advantage for that at bat. Um, and here's some of the cases that we did that. So we'll look at hitter A, right? Hitter A is one of the best hitters on our team. You'll see him in the top of the lineup all spring, right? This guy is going to find a way to put the bat on the ball. He's going to have good at bats. And it's just something that we have to work around. And I think the biggest thing for us, we're going this fall was like, all right, we're just going to try and minimize the impact this guy's going to be able to have for the purple team this fall, right? We don't need to focus on shutting him down. We just need to work on making sure that when he puts the ball in play, it's going to be something that we can handle, right? So looking at baseball cloud, this is something we would do for all of the opposing hitters. We would take some of the exit velocity heat maps, spray charts, um, some of the plate discipline metrics and batted ball profiles for all the pitch types, um, just so that we have a baseline of all of this stuff. And then we go even further and break that down by pitch type. So we're looking at, again, swing and miss uh, zones and with the contour graph, um, per fastball, per breaking ball. And with this particular guy, one thing we notice is like, all right, when we go back to and look at the spray chart, you can see down here, we're going to see that there's his weak spot is we're going to be able to get him out if we can get him to ground out to the pull side, left-handed hitter here. So our plan of attack here is looking at some of the metrics that we are getting for baseball cloud. We're going to say, all right, 
let's focus on getting in advantageous counts where we can throw breaking balls low in the zone that are going to elicit a swing or miss or one of the ones where this is the pitch that he's going to ground out with the highest percentage. So this is going to put us in a good spot. We're going to find ways that we can set up these particular pitch types for our guys so that we have the best chance of getting one of our best hitters on the team out. Second slide is going to be hitter B. This is going to be a little bit more of a simpler case just because this is uh, one of the hitters, again, does a good job of putting the bat on the ball and not a ton of swings and misses. But one thing we're able to see here is with this particular athlete, we're hitting the ball in the air a lot. So we're not going to try and change that. But one thing we can identify is we saw lower exit velocity on fly balls. Uh, and we had an 80% zone swing rate on fastballs in the zone. So this particular guy, I think, had one double up to the fall World Series and all of the scrimmages. So we'll hedge our bets on that one. We'll take a quick at bat, let this guy fly up, fly out quick pitch, high percentage out for us. And I think that's something that allows us to, again, minimize pitch count and continue to focus on some of the guys that are coming up later in the lineup, right? So there's just a couple of cases where we can do that for our pitchers. So that's pretty much it. That's kind of a quick breakdown of how we're using Baseball Cloud at Abilene Christian. Um, if anyone on the thing wants a uh, podcast or whatever here wants to follow me on socials, it's going to be, uh, at Alex Valasek on Twitter and Instagram, and then follow ACU Baseball, man. Give us a follow. Um, we're rare. We want you there. So we're we got a great going this spring. For a college baseball program, that's for sure. That's right. So what was the, kind of the reception? Because uh, we, we came in and you guys started using Baseball Cloud probably like halfway through the fall. Yeah. What was kind of the reception with your players? Um, was it pretty new to them? Uh, and what tech you guys used and what kind of reports you gave them before Baseball Cloud? Yeah, no, I think it, the one thing we did a good job of early was we were trying to use what you saw on the earlier with the Google Sheets um, mm -hmm. to really try to educate guys on what those metrics mean um, and like how they can use them with the rest of their arsenal. And it's like, all right, your low spin, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. That just means you need to probably optimize your arsenal a different way. Um, so starting there and then adding baseball cloud to that made that feedback loop in terms of athlete education much quicker where we're able to say like, look, here's where in terms of like heat maps, you are getting a ton of low EV ground balls in this particular zone with your fastball. That's probably a spot that we want to focus on. So. That's awesome. That's awesome. I saw what's up, Joseph from Virginia and Adam Shuck. I saw John uh, join in here late. If you guys have any questions or anything, but um, yeah. and then Alex, I'll chime in. First of all, I'm Eric. Nice to meet you, man. I know you work with Brooks mostly, but I've heard nothing yeah. but great things about you and the program. So um, I was happy I was able to catch your presentation. It was awesome. Um, one thing I, I, I want to just commend you for, um, and I hope and I hope the, the people on here actually got to hear that when you're talking about looking at a guy's slider and your first determination was that the metrics weren't good and that you might have to change something but you didn't go right away to the guy and say, we need to totally revamp your slider. We need more horizontal break. You actually went and looked at the results, which again, keep in mind, that's also data. The fact that, yeah, this slider metrically isn't great, but like you said, this dude is a funky tall lefty, um, nope. hides the ball. Well, guys have trouble with it. So if it's not broken, we're not going to fix it. Um, so, and that's, and that's something that I think, you know, you guys having a track man device have the same technology as a lot of schools, but the ability to be able to, apply it in ways like that, I think is going to set you guys apart. Um, so, so great job with everything, man. Keep it up. Yeah, hundred percent. And to that, like being able to use a platform where we can look at outcome metrics and movement metrics at the same time really allowed us to be able to identify something like that. Cause if we're just grinding through Google sheets, that's probably something that slips through the cracks. So. Totally. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate you guys having me on. Excited to use Baseball Cloud this spring. Absolutely. Get back to playing games, actually, and have a real – right. too long. All right. You guys keep up the good work. Hey, thanks, man. Thank you. My job easy. Yeah, exactly. There we go. All right. Cool. Have a good one.